All right, it is four o'clock and I will call the City Plan Commission meeting to order. If you're able, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Oh, I should call the roll first. Dave? Here. John? Here. Jerry? Here. Mayor's here. Marilyn? Here. Ryan? Here. All right. And then Alder Mitchell is excused. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting? So second. Is there a motion in? No. There was a motion in second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from our last meeting, please state aye. Aye. Any opposition? Chair votes aye. Minutes are approved. All right. First is item number six, public hearing regarding the proposed amendments for boundary and project plan for tax incremental district 16. Anyone wishing to be heard? Anyone wishing to be heard? Anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Motion second. All those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposition? Chair votes aye. Public hearing is closed. Next, item number seven, consideration and possible action of the resolution designation proposed amendment boundaries and approving the project plan amendment for tax incremental district 16. Chad. Thank you, Chair. So um, this is a document to do a territory amendment for TIF number 16. So TIF 16 uh, goes primarily from um, Wisconsin Avenue or the library down to the a Street Bridge um, and is along A Street. So the, the plan before you is to uh, do a, TIF, a territory amendment to TID 16 to bring in the parcel of the Sheboygan Press Building um, and only the Sheboygan Press Building in, uh, in order to allow the city to provide development incentives for that project. So this body has approved previously the construction drawings for uh, the renovation of the former Sheboygan Press Building into um, 27, 29, 30 workforce housing units, somewhere between 25 and 30. Every document has a different number, but um, basically to convert that as a historic preservation project into 25 to 30 housing units that would uh, qualify under the city's affordable housing uh, plan requirements based on the rents that they're proposing to charge. So um, the plan is to amend the district and bring that into the district and then be able to provide Cardinal Capital, who's the developer with developer incentives. Uh, Phil Costin is here from Ellers and the city had contracted with Ellers and Associates to do the project plan and Phil will be able to run through more details about the uh, financials of the deal. Phil, take it away. Great, thank you. Phil Costin with Ellers, nice to be with you tonight, this afternoon, I'm sorry, I'm used to night meetings. Close uh, enough, right? Yeah, close. Uh, as Chad indicated, uh, I'll just give a brief summary since uh, he did a good job kind of outlining uh, what the purpose here is, but in the project plan, I'm, a few things I wanna point out, uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about the financials of the tax increment district as well. Uh, I think you had up on page eight was the, the boundaries that showed the uh, old Sheboygan Press uh, building being added. It's the only parcel identified in red, uh, as you can see there. Uh, this district was, as Chad said, originally created in 2015 as a mixed use tax increment district, meaning that the maximum life of this district is 20 years. Uh, this amendment doesn't change the life of the district and it doesn't change the expenditure period, which is 15 years of the district as well. So this is really a rel relatively simple amendment uh, to bring in uh, this parcel, uh, as Chad indicated, to uh, provide incentives to Cardinal Capital uh, to be able to renovate and uh, reuse this, this building. On page four uh, of our project plan, section one, uh, is actually an executive summary. I've kind of pulled in some of the sections from the original project plan, uh, so you understand what the original purpose of TID 16 was. 
Uh, the expenditure, again, that's being added is 500,000. Uh, the agreement, as I understand it at this point, uh, is up to $500,000 that could be provided through an MRO, a municipal revenue obligation, uh, which is a fancy way of saying they build it, they pay taxes on it, and they get part of that reimbursed back. Uh, so the city is not borrowing the money up front, rather reimbursing back out of the increased value uh, that is being received by this redevelopment. Uh, what they have identified at this point, uh, what we have in our plan is 29 workforce housing units uh, that can vary, I'm sure, and an investment of up to $4.7 million uh, at this site. So pretty substantial investment. Uh, we do, as part of a project plan, always include uh, cash flows, understanding that you know this district is only about seven years in, so there's time yet for both costs that could be incurred and development that can be realized. Uh, but the project plan that we have identified right now, if you go to again and show on page 26 in the plan, um, we have identified uh, this development kind of highlighted in yellow. Uh, that's the expenditure. What we're showing is really the five year period that they will be reimbursed back uh, over time uh, as the agreement currently reads. Uh, and you can see that Cumulatively, while this district is in a negative, uh, we do show that it's gonna flip over uh, due to this development and other development that's been realized. Uh, and by 2031, uh, enough revenue will be generated to close out the district up to five years early. Now again, there's time yet for expenditures and other development or redevelopment to occur in the area uh, as well. So from an amendment standpoint, this is pretty simple. Uh, it's one parcel. The redevelopment, we have a developer lined up, and then developer is uh, uh, close to a development agreement, I understand, uh, and no upfront incentive by the city, which is really important. This is, uh, this is a, um, a way to kind of shift the risk to the developer uh, using this mechanism of financing. So with that, happy to answer any questions that you have. Chen? Just to one of the issue, the reason for the TIF incentive need is historic preservation. So you'll recall when you approved the drawings, they were doing a facade renovation and bringing back the original windows in the building. And that's really where a lot of the cost differential is coming from because doing historic renovations typically cost more than just standard um, renovations. So that's where the gap in their performa came from. And under our TIF policy, that is an eligible activity. Anyone? Jerry? I'd make a motion to approve as presented. Yes. Second. Motion and second. Good plan, good plan, yes. Any other dis uh, discussion, contributions? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposition? Chair votes aye, that item is approved. All right, thank you. Thanks, Phil, I'll see you at the next meeting. <laughs> All right, item number eight, RO number 102223 by the Capital Improvements Commission to whom was referred RO number 12223 by Administrator Todd Wolf submitting Capital Improvements Program requests for the years 23 to 2027. Chen? So I'll start out and then I know that uh, City Administrator Wolf and Carrie Aarons are here from the uh, City Administrator's Office if there is any spe specific questions on this, but um, this, these projects in the Capital Improvements Program have gone through two meetings of the Capital Improvements Commission and was recommended out of the commission um, for the award for the 2023 um, projects uh, that are identified in the spreadsheet that was attached. And the um, standard procedure under state statute is that it has to uh, go to the Planning Commission in order to be adopted, so that's why it's coming this way. Jerry is the member that sits on the Capital Improvements Commission with the mayor, and if you have any questions, I'm sure those two would be happy to answer them. Otherwise, we would be looking forward to a recommendation to approve the plan as submitted and a favorable recommendation back to the council. Administrator Wolf, additional comments, questions, concerns? Thank you, Chair. Um, I, Basically, what I would like to, you know, ask the uh, committee is that you would you would pass it in a positive uh, fashion. It is obviously the 2023 CIP, 
We are going to be looking at, uh, at future CIPs of taking it out, from not just from five years, but to 10 years, so that the, uh, the committee, the commission, um, capital improvements, um, the, uh, the planning group can also understand it from what are we looking at for long-term future projects. So this was uh, approved anonymously, um, if I recall correctly, and it is, uh, it fits within our budget for spending. Thank you. Sounds good. Comments, questions, motions from commissioners? I make a motion to recommend approval of the council. Subject to conditions. Second. Motion second, final thoughts? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Next meeting, June 14th. We've exhausted the agenda. It's adjourned. Okay. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. 411. We're adjourned.